ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again. How to find for the new order, the Far Eastern Imperial Realm, where we left off. Don't really remember what happened. We united everything, and now we're just, you know, getting a bunch of stuff in. I feel like I, I probably need some reserves, right? How big are my reserves? Ah, could be better. Could be better. Actually, I'm thinking. There we go, and then already, already support artillery, motorized recon, um, engineer, anti tank, right? Good. I want to see this and this can I not compare them I want to compare them which is better this weighs more well these ones does don't matter this actually has negative fuel for some reason So, wait, what the fuck? Oh, they don't have full equipment yet, so I guess, yeah, right, right, right. I'll, I'll let them have their equipment before. All right, right, right. I'll let them have their equipment first, and then I'll compare them. Because I want to see which one is it. Is the elite one better, or is the regular one better? There we go. Are they <clears throat> are they filled up? Seems like it. See, there you go. Which one is better? Soft attack here. Slightly less hard attack. Air attack is better here. Way better defense. Uh, slightly better. Puts less piercing. Hmm. That's it. More HP though. Bit less organization. Bit more reconnaissance. Honestly. I'm thinking there's a case to be made. For the regulars. We need more manpower, but less. Yeah, we need more manpower, that's the most thing. There we go. We don't have the manpower for it, in fact. But the equipment we do. So that's good. To start. Go. Uh, continue down this path, please. Good. Actually, I do think I'll probably have to. Uh, placing the artillery shell on the assembly line, his hundredth of the day, Andre side, and uh, looking around to see if the water was uh, watching stretches aching back a former fighter for the matkovsky faction of the rfp andre had been captured during the fall of magadan after a short time spent in a tsar's prison camp wondering as to his ultimate fate he had suddenly been issued a simple tools and sent to the iron mile uh, near Chida. long hours spent underground had driven him almost to the point of insanity and nearly destroyed his physical b him physically besides just as suddenly, however, he had been ordered into a truck, and within a short order, he found himself in a munitions factory assembly and polishing artillery shells. It was hard work, but it was nothing compared to mining, even if there were many more guards watching him now. He supposed he couldn't blame them. Placing former enemies in proximity to high explosives 
would have given him pause as well, but they had nothing to worry about, at least not uh, from those smart enough to properly understand their situation. Even if escape and subtouch was possible, there was nowhere to go and Matkovsky was gone. As stressful as work uh, in the factory was, it was a far better sight uh, than that of a mine. The food and barracks were better as well, so Andre would work and work hard. One day, he knew the Tsarists would have to let him go. Until then, however, he would work. Fishing. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Keep working, my dude. Keep, keep working, my dude. In the meantime, let's get the... Uh, let's go on as well. We do need manpower. Oh, experienced industry. Let's get this going. It's gonna give me a bit more manpower every week. It's not much, but it's honest work. But it's honest work. Actually, we might... What am I producing right now? There we go. After that, it might be for the best to just start. Producing shit across the border. Because I do feel like we're probably evenly matched. I've, I've looked it up um, off camera to see uh, how it would be like. And we're sort of evenly matched. So, uh, yeah. Let's get into it. Because war's gonna pop off in, in like a year or so. Probably. Weekly stability, do we care? Hmm. Revitalize the national service, I wouldn't mind that as well. That would be pretty nice too. I got fear and loathing of Los Angeles. No, that's not an important one. I've already read that one. Better, ooh yeah baby. Better research facilities. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. And with that, our poverty will be fixed somewhat. <laughs> At least that's, that's the idea, really. Propaganda, don't, mm, no. Construction, nah. I should no longer really care about the, the debt, I think. Weekly stability is actually a lot. There we go. I, I almost completely bought it off though. So that's good. Hmm. Damn, assassination. Of Albert Speer. We didn't get the event because you know they didn't say anything to us, but still. Damn, son. Construction, I don't really care about too too much. All in a day's work. This was uh, the early dawn when a grizzled old figure stepped onto his front porch. A glass of vodka in hand, Kirill leaned into his chair. Savoring the crisp morning air only a few years ago and he would be setting out into the wilderness to hunt or forage But now there's hardly anything left of the forest. He once knew so well The old hunter turned his eyes down gazing at the vast industrial park, which had replaced the wilderness 
he played a part in that, trading his soul for money, helping destroy his forest, which had provided his family for generations, oh, and the IDC had paid him handsomely for his services. The money helped him keep his home, allowed him to provide his children the education to ensure that they do well in the new Siberia. His children were somewhere down there, working in the vast expanse of steel and concrete. Siberia may have been tamed, the wilderness replaced with civilization, but civilization was no place for men like him. His children would never be able to live the life he had, probably for the better. But where others saw progress, all he saw was the cost of the wildlife, the forests and the rivers. His glass was empty now, alcohol dulling his mind, filled as it was with the regrets and increasingly distant memories. Stumbling onto his feet, the old hunter went back inside, one last untamed beast in a civilized land. Yeah, damn, that really sucks. You know, that was his entire life and he, he loved life like that. He was poor and he struggled, sure, but he was happy living his life that way. Now they take, they've taken it away from him. Well, we've taken it away from him, rather. Allocate funding in here. Good. Hmm. Industrial expertise, research. Let's go down here. First. Invite the Japanese industrial experts. That's good. And then invite the electronics boys. That'd be probably pretty nice. Once we get the pointage for that, of course. Good. Outdated anti-tank guns. We will replace them. There we go. Continue on. Research facilities. Improve that shit, please. Um. Yeah. Hard attack, why not? Nothing left to improve down there. Yeah, and the rest will be going into making those fortifications. So let's level it up to level two everything. go that be for the best I think good mm. so I increase GDP growth oh yes how much is it growing 6.9 still We got 70 million left to pay off. Oh, and even more GDP growth. Good. There's some more Japanese shipments. Good. The more guns we have, the better, right? These are mostly Japanese. I wish I could see where they're from. Normally you should be able to click on them, right? But I guess not in this case. I guess not in this case. Uh, import some trucks, sure. Sure. Get some more factories going as well. Artillery pieces. Yes, please. 
Oh yeah, we're, we're, we're getting closer. Actually, there we go. No need to build additional factors just yet. Good. Let's get the Manchurian boys in as well. Buy off our debt again. Oh, 8.1. That's pretty good. That's actually a lot of growth. Army experience. Do we care about that? Sure. I mean, we care about everything in the end. But still. One step at a time. <laughs> Alright, we've already built one entire fort. And slowly but surely we'll build even more. So let's increase that. Hell yeah. Seven. <laughs> oh, the Scots are uh, being invaded, apparently. It's pretty interesting. I didn't get that event for, uh, I had to do it manually when I was playing as uh, the UK. That's a shame, I would have loved to do that as well. Oh well, they're gonna form the uh, United Kingdom again. So there's that. Uh, consolidate state resources. Hmm. Let's go in here first. The old prince, like a blast of cold Siberian air. Wait, let me select the next one, of course. A uh, blast of cold Siberian air was first uh, thing to meet Nikita uh, Alexandrovich as he made his way out to the plane and onto the tarmac of Kedela Airport. Despite all his meticulous preparations, it seemed that the prince had still managed to underestimate the frigid conditions of the region. Pulling his fur coat more tightly, Nikita continued his descent towards the large group of men uh, who had gathered to greet his arrival. Chief of Staff Boris Shepanov was in front of the gathering, eager rece to receive the prince. Prince Nikita, your highness, allow me to be the first to welcome you and your family back to Russia. Nikita gave a courteous smile and extended his hand to Shepanov. Greetings, General. It's good to be back. Uh, now flanked with his wife and two sons, Nikita and Alexander. Uh, tilted sideways to look past Shepanov and onto the crowd behind him is a, where's my nephew? I would have liked to speak with him. I apologize, your highness, but his imperial majesty was feeling a bit under the weather today. And I'm afraid um, he was unable to be there. I'm sure he would be delighted to meet with his family otherwise. Come on, let's get you and your family out to the cold. Despite what the general had said, Prince Nikita found it rather odd that his nephew was not among those. Yeah, it's almost like he's under house arrest constantly by this little piece of so-and-so, which will utterly devastate if we get a chance. Let's actually train him up. A little bit. Get better cannons in. Mm, yes, please. Good. Can I conscript more people? That is a question. There's no way for me to, you know. Scrape the barrel. On purpose, right? Well, this would be amazing. 
recruit them into our army. The women. All right. An unusual request. Let's ask for recognition of the Americans. So. We can go for here. Uh, yes, and then yes. And there we go, only 300 million in debt. But we'll fix that soon enough. We will fix that soon enough. <laughs> Come on, my dude. Give me what I want. Unusual request. Uh, you said he was a Russian. Are you sure? I'm positive. His English was so broken we couldn't understand him. We had to find someone in the building who spoke Russian to find out what he wanted. Send him in. Although the ambassador was confused, his curiosity was piqued. It had been some time since the ambassador had brushed up uh, on his Russian, but he was confident he knew enough to conduct diplomacy. After a few quiet moments, the mysterious emissary entered the um, ambassador's office. Salutations, I represent His Majesty I'm Mikhail II, Emperor of all Russia. I come to you today to request official diplomatic recognition from the United States as the true government of Russia. The, amb and the ambassador was completely overwhelmed uh, by what he had just heard. He, he slowed down, pal. He said you represent an emperor. Indeed, on behalf of their divinely chosen emperor, Mikhail II, uh, the White Russian, the White Army has wrest Eastern Siberia away from the fascist and Bolshevik tyrants. Now that our position is secure, we wish to obtain recognition as a legitimate government. We are. This answer only raised more question. Uh, the ambassador was going to have to call someone about this, but he'd first have to get his strange Russian out of his office. Well, I'm afraid there's not much I can do, seeing as my job uh, is to handle the relations with Japan, but I can make some calls to the State Department on your behalf. Uh, there we go. Open diplomatic relations. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Ooh, there's some manpower in there. Good. Keep paying off all of this though. Good. What's the situation down here? How many forts have we built out? That's it? That's not that much, all things considered. The 1st of May. So basically it's the same thing, yeah? He wanted, uh, in short, his MPA wishes to look past any historical transgressions and promote a great renewal in Russia-Japanese rela relations. Rest assured, we approach as friends and equals. Uh, sounded painfully rehearsed and he hoped that a fact was lost on the Japanese. His Japanese counterpart turned to speak to one of his subordinates in a language that Russian delegation didn't understand. The plan then turned back to Abram Abramov with an unconvinced, unconvincing smile on his face. Equals, you see. What an interesting uh, perspective, to say the least. Don't, do not worry. Japan is indeed open to strengthening relations. I sincerely hope that today meeting, today's meeting shall be the first of many. Perhaps we uh, will also learn a thing or two about conducting diplomacy in the process, yes? Uh-huh, so they weren't particularly successful, but successful enough. There we go, keep going. Keep going at it, my dudes. Worker training. I mean, I'm fine with that, but still. I'm not sure. Some expertise is always welcome. There we go. <laughs> I 
We can get some guns as well. Very lovely indeed. Let's get some um, more manpower for our armies because we do desperately need that. Alright. New infantry gun as well. Yes. The AKM. <laughs> uh, sh let's keep let's keep stocking up. My hope is that eventually we can actually get more juice up in here. There we go. Army professionalism increases. Good. Sign of the times. Oh, Sophia has ventured out from her apartment for a more, uh, far more than usual. Ever since the fascist government had been driven out of Zaya, she felt quite comfortable walking the streets again, knowing that the thugs of the RFP no longer terrorize the city. That is not to say, however, that things were any less strange. As she made her way home for the day, Sophia noticed a small group of people gathering around the sidewalk in front of her. Their attention appeared to be focused on something attached to the side of the building. Whatever it was, it caused quite a stir. Attached to the wall was a large propaganda poster, clearly meant to advertise service in the White Army. Front and center was an idealized depiction of a fierce looking soldier, charging a two headed dragon with his rifle in hand. The dragon was clearly an evil creature, uh, with one head colored red and the other one deep black. Sophia could not help but feel twinges of concern. While this poster was fairly benign, similar militaristic designs would not uh, look entirely out of place in the previous regime. Huh. Well, let's hope we don't uh, fall into that same trap as the previous controllers of your territory are. Oh, she lives here, apparently. Alright. We're gonna nuke you if you don't shut the fuck up. Oh. There we go. It happened. Let's get the f this. Let's get this. Yes. All of that. And then the rest will be fortifications as well. Uh, I want to build up my fortifications first, though. Oh, they're halfway done, actually. So that's pretty decent. That is pretty decent indeed. Alright, we're both preparing for war, eh? Good. We're also paying back our s fucking loans. Slowly but surely. Eventually we'll get somewhere uh, worthwhile. Yeah, look at that. It's getting uh, far along the border. Mm. The Baikal line. Taksimo and Verkudny. That's Irkutsk. Oh, this one? Oh, these two. Ah, oh, right, right, right. In case we get pushed back. Yeah, that's fine. And Irkutsk as well. Oh, Irkutsk as well. That's good. Um. Sure. Let's pay off even more people. Uh, when will we get our manpower? Very soon, actually. Let's see.
Mm -hmm. Actually, you as well. We're gonna convert you into this. Yeah, put all the uh, all the men in there, please. Good. Basic training. Ooh. Yes, please. Lacking some manpower in here, right? Oh no, rather we're lacking some equipment apparently. Which is mostly the anti-tank stuff. But, you know, we're making it, so that's good. It's all good, man. There we go. Oh, invite industrial experts again. Education reforms. Oh, would you look at that? We're doing something. Let's get the basic training going as well. Oh, we have some manpower. Let's train up these boys. Mm -hmm. I'll probably send them out, right? All right, so they're beginning to amass. Thankfully, you've trained everyone up. Let us attach on this boy. Abramov, there we go. Offensive. Oh, we can't. I will have to do that later. Good. We'll delete this one and we'll attach a plan like this. Good. Alright, the war hasn't sprung just yet. Ah, oh, but we're there. We're very, very close. You'd have no idea how close we are. Hmm. Well, we can begin the invasion, but then we'd be the attacker, so I'd rather wait. 2BH. There you go, they declared the war. This is it, boys. This is it. They're not attacking us. Thankfully. But we could potentially go in here. I'm watching towards the future. Um, 
what he saw instead was quite different. The troops marched in lockdown, their eyes focused upon their Tsar and their arms in salute. Their uniforms were impeccably well maintained and slung over their shoulders with the latest in small arm designs. Even an old white like Shepanov uh, couldn't help but be impressed by the gallant figure the soldiers below had presented. As the foot soldiers passed, the famed Cossack riders came into view. Shepanov couldn't help but get emotional. After so many years, this was the army that he had been trying to build. Not a rack, a collection of mountain raiders and militias. Professional force ready to take on the world if it came to that. Vladimir, I uh, never thought I'd say I'd see the day that the white army would resemble an actual military. This is incredible. Yeah, it'd get you emotional, huh? Well, enjoy the sight while you can, brother. All right. This one can stay. Yeah, he, he can stay. The other ones, not, not so much. Considering they are winning their engagements. Alright, so we'll stay where you are, right? Just stay where you are. Japanese arm shipments. Good, we are at war, our stability is horrible. But you know, we do what we must. Alright, there we go. Oh, and everyone else in the, in the Russian Empire is also... Right, 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 right. They're going for it. Our manpower is bad, though. That much is for certain. We'll go down there some more. And don't push in. Just stay on the defensive. 5k on both sides lost. Let's get the trucks going. Good. Um, no, it's too soon. As much as I'd love to. No, we can improve our current artillery. There you go. Stay where we are right now. Dig in and dig in deep. Hmm. Actually pay off some more. There we go. So Since we're here, might as well build this one up instead, right? This is our new front line. Because I don't think we'll be able to hold this on uh, much longer considering we have zero manpower. And the reserve. So if they beat us up hard enough, we'll probably squeal. Unless we get one of those events again that give me more manpower. In which case, we'll be somewhat safe for now. No need for this. There we go. Where's the recon company? Damn it, it's not what I want. There you go, steel riders. The frigid winds of the Far East cut through the thick coats of the assembled men of the 8th Siberian Cossack Division. <clears throat> the midnight sun casting an eerie light on a company, Isol Urakov strode up towards his men, his dark eyes uh, peeking out from under his fur cap. The company commander seemed to be in the jubilant mood, an unusual spring animating his uh, rapid steps. Boys, you're probably wondering why I dragged your masses uh, out here this early in the morning. Well, shut the fuck up and you'll find out. That's better. About time. Come on, lads, let's unwrap your gifts from the Tsar. 
You're a tank division now, boys. I mean, they, I feel like they'd have to know how to actually use a tank in the first place before that's actually any use. But that might just be me. But anyway, with that said, that is pretty much all the time I have left for today. I uh, do hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you did. Hopefully, I'll see you next time. And uh, hopefully, you have a nice day. Bye-bye.